At last and did my Savior bleed and did my Son die. Would he be wrong that scared him for such a as I? At the cross, at the cross, where I first saw the light, and the burden of my heart rolled away. It was there by faith I received my sight, and now I am happy all the day. If there arises among you a prophet or a dreamer of dreams, and he gives you a sign of one or a wonder, and the signs for the or the wonder comes to pass of which he speaks of, I'm sorry, of which of which he speaks to you, saying, Let us go after other gods, which you have not known, and let us serve them. You shall not listen to the words of that prophet or that dreamer of dreams. For the Lord your God is testing you to know whether you love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul. And you shall walk after the Lord your God and fear him and keep his commandments. Obey his voice. You shall serve him and hold fast to him. But that prophet or that dreamer of dreams shall he be put to death because he has spoken in order to turn you away from the Lord, your God, who brought you out of the land of Egypt and redeemed you from the house of bondage mm -hmm. to entice you from the way in which the Lord, your God, commanded you to walk. So you shall put away the evil from your midst. And I read from you uh, Deuteronomy chapter 13, verses 1 through 5. May the Lord have a blessing to the reading and hearing his word. Shall we pray? Yeah. Most gracious, turn of Father God. As again, our Father, we come to you once again saying thank you, Heavenly Father, for looking down on us once again, our Father. Seeing this another first Sunday, and thank you, our Father, that. We all still here, Heavenly Father. Mm, yes, yes. Thank you, Father, for giving us health and strength, our health and strength right now. And able us, our Father, just to say this prayer once again, our Father, that we thank you, Heavenly Father, for all you have done from this past week to this present moment. Even though we might not feel in our best, dear God, I'm still going on in your name, our Father, knowing, our Father, you are able, God, to heal this body that I'm going to, our Father. We ask dear Father, strengthen us right now. Strengthen those, our Father, who are sick and shut in at this very moment. And those who are with this COVID, we ask dear Father, strengthen them right now in the most special way. And dear God, those who are bereaved, we ask you to look down the bereaved family here and there and everywhere, Father, at this very moment in time. And dear Lord, be with our teacher today, our Father, as she gives the word on high about thee, our Father, that someone might come out asking, what I must do to be saved. Dear Lord, we ask the Father to look down on them in the most mindful way, our Father, God, can, our Father. Father God, we ask the our Father to strengthen us right now is my prayer. And we ask all these blessings in thy son, Jesus' name, for Christ's sake, we do pray to us. Amen. 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 As we said, we got another beautiful day in the neighborhood, as Mr. Rogers used to say. <laughs> yes. Another beautiful day in the neighborhood. Oh. oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, sun is shining bright. Yes. And our minds is already in the spring. Mine is. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> and we are starting our spring quarter in our lesson study coming out of the Sunday School Commentary. And the title of the lesson we are starting today is Moses, a prophet of deliverance. And that is coming out of Deuteronomy 18th chapter, verses 15 through 22. And our background scripture is from Exodus 12, which, 
verses 28 through 50. And we have a devotion on reading, and I'm giving these for a reason that so many will know where the lesson's coming from, to read, to encourage to read the background scriptures, and then read our devotional scripture, and you'll find that they all ties in. Our devotional scripture is coming out of Psalm 77, verses 11 through 20. And I said today we're starting our, pre, our spring quarter, and Unit 1 that talks about faithful prophets. And we know that anytime we going into answering the call of God, we need to be faithful to our calling. Yes. And our unit will be taken from the book of Exodus, Deuteronomy, Joshua, and first and second King. So in this lesson, in these lessons, we're going to see why uh, God needed prophets to speak to his people. And because uh, the people needed to hear from the Lord their God and to know what he expected of from them and how they were supposed to live in response to him. And as they were his people and he was their God. Okay. So, and that being what God is wanting his people to know, see, to know God being a, a loving and kind, compassionate God, he loves his people so much that he does not want them stumbling around and not knowing what God, what he expects them. So he said, I need some faithful prophets to speak to me, to speak to my people and saying, what does the Lord say? So that's why we are starting with the book of Moses, with Moses and showing his faithfulness and his, lead, his faithfulness to God and his people and his dedication and love for the nation of Israel, okay? And so first, let me just say this, just reiterate or reemphasize the difference between a prophet and a priest. A prophet speaks to the people for God, whereas a priest speaks to God for the, pre for the people, okay? Now, in the book of Deuteronomy, when we stuck study the book of Deuteronomy, we will find that it is like the second law from what Moses had given to the people over in, in Exodus and Mount Sinai, okay? So he was re-giving these commitments, which was uh, their commitment to, the, to, to adhere to God's commandments that Moses had given to the people at Mount Sinai when he was speaking to them for what God said. So as we get into this, we want to say, okay, the question is, where were the people in this setting? Where were they? They had come from somewhere. They had left Egypt. They had been wandering in the wilderness some 40 years. So now they're uh, at uh, the land. They were in the land of Moab, just opposite the Red Sea. And they was where they could look over and see the promised land even though they hadn't got there, they could see it. Now, we said that God needed faithful peace, a prophets to speak to his people for him. And we know at this juncture, Moses was a prophet chosen by God to lead the nation of Israel out of Egypt, fulfilling his God's promise to deliver his people out of bondage and he will bring them back to the land of Canaan. Okay, Moses, and I may be reiterating, was the only leader that this generation of Israelites had never known because the earlier generation who started out with Moses out of the land of Egypt, they had the parents and the grandparents, they had died in the wilderness because of their rebellion against God. And the point I want to make right here is that when you rebel with God, against God, there is going to be some consequences that we're going to have to suffer, just like the Israelites did. It's, 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 disobedience always carries a punishment. We can look at, at, at what happened in the Garden of Eden. What God do, he put them out of the, uh, the Garden of Eden, where they had everything at their disposal. 
Here he allowed the nation of Israel to wander in the wilderness 40 years, but to go 40 miles because of their rebellion. And we remember that when Moses was up there on the mountain getting the commandments, the people got impatient and jumped up and built them a golden calf. Now that yes. is totally mm -hmm. against what God said. No, you should not have no other gods before me. Mm -hmm. You will not have no grave, make no graven images of me. You can't do all of this foolishness. And that's, mm -hmm. that's exactly what they done, mm -hmm. rebelling against God and his laws and his holiness. And so what did they do? God didn't allow this generation to get into the promised land. So Moses got a, this younger generation taking them over. We know the story. Moses didn't get there with them. We are, I don't want to get ahead in the next week's lesson that talks about Joshua, mm -hmm. who took them in there. I've just said that. So we're going <laughs> to. So <laughs> Moses being that faithful leader and as a fatherly figure, if you can look at it, that he was reminding the nation this young generation that to remember the goodness of the Lord their God and what he had done in their life. Okay, he took care of them all the way through their wilderness days. And now if you think that you have clothes and shoes that last 40 years, yeah. well, hey, we have clothes and shoes on it on last 40 days or 40 <laughs> years. So that was nothing but the goodness of God. So right. they needed to be reminded of the Lord's goodness and from where they had come from. And no doubt, if I can say this, that they had heard about how God had fed their parents and grandparents with manna from heaven. And he rained down quails and he fed them with, or gave them water from a rock. They didn't have to do anything but just be uh, be obedient to him, serve him, and, and worship him instead of being hard-headed and impatient and making a golden calf. That calf cannot answer no prayers. That mm -hmm. calf cannot provide shelter for him. He cannot provide cover him from the desert heat. And, and he cannot provide a light for him at night when he was traveling. See, God mm -hmm. did all of this. And so we need to think about, and they needed to think about those things and remember and be appreciative of those things. And so what I'm gonna say here, what did that say for us today? We all have our Red Sea experience. Yes. And when we can remember how what our full parents have come through when they was enslaved and under the obstacles and even when things weren't as, as convenient for them as it is for us today. We had a TV in every room. We had the refrigerator and, and a freezer to keep all the excess food. We had to have every convenience for us, whereas our four parents didn't have all of that. So right. we need to be reminded of those things, how they made it, and to know that whatever God did for them, he will do the same thing for the, us today. He will take care of us. He will, he will supply all our needs because That's he right. is that kind of Faithful, unchanging God. All right. Okay. Now, so we see here, Moses is relaying all of these to the people. And this young generation, as I said, they had heard it, but uh, many hadn't lived through all of it. But he, Moses was not taking any assumption of that you, you should know. He said, I know you're going to know because I'm going to tell you. And I want you to remember this. And so what Moses knew, he was in his last days, in his final days. Because remember, Moses was 80 years old when he started to lead the people. And he's at 80 plus 40, that's 120 all day long. <laughs> you know, and by our standards today, that's an old man. <laughs> That's an old man. Yes, it is. <laughs> and here we get to be 70 and 80. We can't hardly put one foot before the other. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying. So we we can count it all to God's goodness. So all right. he was saying, listen, 
I want you to hear these instructions. I'm going to tell you what I want you to know. And I won't, I'm not assuming that you, I want this, you going into the promised land. It is different from what you've been used to. And here's how I want you to, know, to live when you get over there. Because Moses knew what was there. And he knew the kind of worship that the Canaanites was uh, practicing. And he was telling the people and he was being loved. He said, I don't want you to be influenced by this Canaanite culture and the idolatry or the idol worship when you get over into this land because you're going to get there because God has already promised it to you. And God is true to his promise. And there is no failure in God, but we just have to get on his time uh, for to see his promise. And then if I can say, when he promised the Israelites while they was in bondage in Egypt, he said, I am going to send you a deliverer. And what did he do? He sent Moses, but he sent him at his time. Moses had to get his mind right. People had to get their mind right. When they all came together, it all worked out. Yes. <laughs> so and my point I'm saying is that listen, I want you to get in my time, not your time, because I operate right. in my time. Yeah. So and he Moses kept saying, Now listen, I want you to remain true to your God, his ways and his commandments. He have told you what he wanted to do, how you want to live. He said, now, I want you to keep my covenant relationship. Um, and the people there. They're doing all kinds of ungodly worship. There was divination, there was witchcraft, there was sorcery, and there were magic. These are kind of things that God said, you do not worship. And we today have our own little form of idolatry. Anything we put before God is an idol. Just like God told the nation of Israel, Thou shalt not have no other God before me. He means that he meant that then. He means that today. And if you go hard-headed and put things before him, guess what? He'll let you wander in your own little wilderness for 40 years. Okay? Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> now, if you don't believe me, just try. <laughs> try it out and see. I, 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 <laughs> I know you're in the middle of this, the part of this lesson, and this just ties, and it's just one question, but it ties to what you just said. Well, I, okay. About, um, I heard you know you hear this new thing called manifestation. Yes, we. A do. manifest. What is your take on that? Manifesting what? Um, well, I guess what it is is that it's uh it's this thing where you I guess you say that you're grateful for this and you're thankful for that, and it's where you want I guess the you know, you want a better way of living, the material things in life. Okay, and it's, let me let me just say that I don't mean to cut you off. No, go ahead. When we can understand and we must the goodness of God and his manifestation of his righteousness because he is holy, he is right, and his way is always right because he established it. And, and when we go contrary to that, we are showing our ungratefulness. Now, let me say this. And we manifest or make known or display our appreciations of what God has done for us and what he is doing and what he's going to do. And remember, I said he never welches on a promise. Whatever he promises is going to come to pass. And if I can bring manifestation in, when he promised the nation of Israel while they was in bondage, that I am going to send you a deliverer, that promise came through and it came through with Moses going back to Egypt as the, the leader and the deliverer that God has promised the nation of Israel to lead them out of bondage. Okay? Now, uh, 
And then, so how do we show our express gratitude? How did they, let me just do it that way. They did because they murmured against Moses in the wilderness, everything that didn't go their way or how they thought it should have gone. They went to murmuring, okay? But did he, in his humanness, he got angry a little bit. But he always would go to God. God gave him that extra strength and that love to keep on leading. And I'll say us because we carry on the same thing. When the leader of the church or the pastor is bringing or saying, uh, we're doing this, it's because he or she has heard from God and going to have committed him or herself to follow God as opposed to man. And let me just jog your memory for a minute. Somebody had got on the late Reverend Clark's nerves one day, and he told them, said that I'm paraphrasing, said, now, nah, I am the pastor. God talks to me. Yeah. If you've ever pastored the church, go pastor. <laughs> well, you <he> said. <laughs> he said, yeah, I know. I, thank you. I got an admin. I know I wasn't great. He no, said, that's you what have, he said. Ask the church, go pass it. But right now I'm passing this. That's one. right. And, and, and then, believe it or not, lo and behold, that same summer when I went to the Wolverine State Congress, there was this man, oh, I think he was from up in Battle Creek, a Grand Rapids one. He was our devotional leader, the lecturer. And he said to the congregation at that point, God don't send no messages to his under shepherd by somebody from the congregation. Okay. Now I remember this. It's the manifest, what is this manifestation? No, manifest, manifest as law of attraction. That's what's going on out here now. Okay. Well, That's we'll what I'm that talking about. I'm sorry. Well, I'm going to leave that long for a minute. Okay. <laughs> Get that next <laughs> I'm going to leave that long for a track. The manifestation of the law of attraction, you need to be focused. And when you come to God, you got to put on this tongue vision. And we have, it's just like when we came to this lane, mm -hmm. pain, we had our own set of cultures. And right. we had to adopt into these some good, some bad. And what we was, our foreparents, picked up the good. Now we, this younger generation, is picking up all of the bad things. I got right. you. Shoes everywhere. They got nose rings everywhere. And they can go worship everything. They're worrying gotcha. about their bank gotcha. account. They're worrying about the Cadillacs and the Lexuses in there. And don't take time to say, Lord, thank you. Hmm. Yes. That's what I'm saying. They're manifesting who is their God by their action. We do by our action. Where are we putting God? Is he I got you now. or is he on the back burner? I go right. call him when I need him. Okay, right. well, you need him every day because you can't wake yourself up. Well, All right. okay, I'm just saying what I just said. Yes, so, yes. <laughs> so, right. And that uh, kind of getting back to what we were talking about, uh, that he was telling them, he, Moses, was telling this, this little hothead generation that I don't want you to get involved with all of that. I want you to stay true to the Lord God who is our creator, our sustainer, and our deliverer. Okay. Now, just as God required faithful prophets during this time, God is still requiring faithful Christian leadership today, and especially in the African American church. Why? Because we are being bombarded with so much of immoral, uh, immorality, and lower standards. We have to remain conscious of the changing in our society. And I'm going to say this. I can remember back in the day, men went to church in suits. Women went to church in their dress, suit dresses or dresses, and they had a head covered. Now we can be 
uh, we might see him come in any kind of way. And, you know, because what we are in this ever changing culture and we, the church is bowing or succumbing to this culture as opposed to staying, staying true to our Christian heritage. And let me say this, we in a culture for men and women will love darkness rather than the light. Mm -hmm. And his, the leader of this congregation must become more spiritual and effective mm -hmm. for to keep leading our people in this ever changing culture that is really is against God's moral standards and his righteousness. Now, we must follow God mm -hmm. to make a difference regardless of the, the capacity of the number of people we serve. The difference has got to be felt in the church and in the community. Why? Because the church is that city that's sitting up on a hill. Yes, like Moses, we're going to have some memory. But we, as the leaders of this local congregation, we must stay true to following God. We have to keep studying. And we have to keep toiling and staying prayed up and in a constant communication with God. Because, let me say this to you. Satan is present and he has reared his ugly head and he is bound and determined to destroy God's people. And let me see if I can say this. Today, and I know if you watch TV, if you watch it five minutes, you're going to see two commercials by an online game. To me, that's a form of, what do I want to say? Do I, no, it's not witchcraft, but it is taking a chancery. That's what I'm trying to say. Because we are taking our trust out of God and putting in something that we made and his own design to make the owners richer and us poor. Because if you get hooked on gambling and they brought it in your home, be through your 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 phone and because you can and all, and through the computers and everybody has computers. So why would I let me just fit, take a chance on losing the little money that I had to try and gain some more money when God says I will supply all of your needs according to who my riches and glory through Jesus Christ, my son, who suffered, bled, and died on the cross for you. I have not failed yet. This is God talking. I have not failed yet. So just as Moses stayed true to following God, that's what we as Christian leaders have to stay true today and we're gonna have to talk about some subjects in our culture today that may not be popular and we're gonna have to take folks back to scripture okay because that's where the truth is and we assure them listen there is no shortage of whatever you need in God there is no failure in God and just as he took care of the nation of Israel when they was out there in tents and, and, and coming through all, dealing with all the things that was out there. He fixed it so they didn't have to go try to farm in the desert. He fed them. He, he kept them clothed. He watered them. Everything they need. So what we need just as Moses, I'm comparing the two now, that we have to keep speaking to the people, okay? We cannot 
stop speaking to the people. And we as leaders who committed ourselves to teaching and preaching the unmitigated truth of God's word, we have, and when we have to prepare that I'm going to leave the scene one day. And I hear, I want you all to know what it is. And I don't want you to get in a hurry trying to pick another leader. Go into prayer and meditation and ask God to send you another leader. Because when we pick up our lesson, he said, now, I am, God said, I'm going to raise you up a prophet from among you. And but if you, we can get ahead, Joshua was that prophet who had been sitting there with Moses all of these times, and he knew the people. So what, my, what I'm trying to say is, when the leader passes off the scene, don't get in a hurry. Wait on God's time. He's going to, he already, listen, God and nothing happens if I take God by surprise. He's already prepared. He already has put a leader out there to replace his servant Moses. And he was going to be a leader that was going to continue to lead those people in a godly manner and take him on into the promised land. Our promised land is to live a godly life. So when this life is over, yeah. we will end it in eternity with our heavenly father. Okay. Now we got all that out. Maybe we were just discovered, but this is what said 15. So we, we can say this. So what was the people's response to Moses when he told them, I don't want you to get in a hurry trying to get another leader. God already mm -hmm. had somebody. He said, now listen, when God gave display his when his thunderous voice and he spoke to them by fire and smoke and they heard that Lord loud voice on my Hebrew, my Herod, he said, now listen, the people said, Moses, I don't want God speaking to us that way anymore. Because they were so, it was so huh, awesome that they felt like, God, we're going to die here in a minute. But he said, no, let's get us a, a person who's going to speak for us. Because when God go to speaking, listen, he will make you tremble. He will make you stand up and say, oh, my God, is this the end? And hmm. we today to know that God is speaking and he's speaking with his anger. Some hear it, some don't hear it, and they're going to be in big trouble. And when he really gets to get to roaring and now the smoke and the fire start coming, I, they're going to be just like these people here in this lesson that they say, Lord, give me somebody to go talk to me because I don't want God speaking to me anymore. Well, he speaks to you because you get hard-headed and don't listen. Okay. Mm -hmm. well, so what we need to do when we come into the presence of God, we must come to him in humility and in reverence and with the spirit of worship. God is not some little ecclesiastical bellhop or somebody mm -hmm. who's on out of level. God transcends transcend his all of his creation. He's above all of his creation, but he's not a God that you can't touch because we can speak to him through prayer and just say, good morning, God. And he listens, he hears, and he certainly will answer. And uh, so when we speak to God, we can expect an answer from God. Okay, so let me just uh, get through this. I want God to speak to me in a pleasant, ease uh, uh, voice, not in one that's going to scare me half to death. And when we get to <laughs> somewhere, we've gotten out of balance. We've lost our, our intimate relationship with God, and it needs to be restored. And if, and if we can say, okay, God is trying to get us to restore our fellowship with him through this pandemic. And if you look at what happened, 
And down in Texas, he really they said, now I was just taking shut down everything on top of everything else that's going on. So we well, need to get it and get back in a fellowship with God and take our golden calves and our golden calves and melt them down and put them to the side and said, come on, God, it's just you and me. Make him first. Okay. So that being I'm, I'm transcending into the qualifications of the prophet that made uh, Moses presented those qualifications that the prophets and the priests, the preachers and the teachers must have today, just as it was then, and not being a false. So we, as the congregation, will not be led away by false prophets. Mm -hmm. Okay. They must be one that is willing to speak the words that the Lord give him or her. They must be obedient and to God, both in words and lifestyle. Because there is a covenant relationship between God and his prophets because they are representing him. And they're, they're speaking to the people for him because God told I want you to speak to my people and lead them so that they can walk in the right way. The Bible may have, hadn't been established at this time. They only had the prophets and then the scrolls. So let me say, if you have a question and wondering about how do I know who speaking to me is a true prophet, from, as in other words, I'm trying to dif differentiate between a true, true prophet and the false prophets, because we do have it. Number one, in his or her obedience to God and humility to God, speaking as God has told him or her as opposed to his or her own word. Okay? So we have the whole Bible. Just read it, speak, and let God speak through us. If the words that the Bible, that the prophet speaks come true, then you know that they are from God. Then if the message that the prophet is speaking is contrary to what is revealed in the written word of God, which is the Bible, it is not from God and it must be rejected. And this brings mind, what is it that we get so far strayed away and these false prophets and these cults. One of them I can say is this, we don't read the word for ourselves. Hmm. You know, it brings into 2 Timothy 2.15, study thyself, study, to show thyself approved unto who? God. That's who we has to please. That's the man that can destroy both body and soul, okay? We are to adhere to his word. And I know I said earlier that we must have God in the forefront of our lives for there is no other God but him. So if I can try to close out so we can be on time because we've got to get ready for service and we don't have your communion stuff, we can close with this. Prophets who are sent by God will stand and speak just what the Lord told them, regardless if it's popular or not. They're not trying to win a popularity contest. They are trying, true prophets, are trying to get the message of God's word into the people. Therefore, they're going to speak the truth, knowing that they're not alone. God's presence through his spirit, the Holy Spirit, is there with them. And regardless to how his or her congregation murmur, they're going to say, like I just said to Reverend Clark tonight, if, if you, want, <laughs> you want to pastor church, get you on, because I'm pastor Nissen. So in other words, they said, I'm going to stand firm on the truth of God's word, regardless of what the world or what you say. 
Okay, I'm going to stand firm. The prophets are called by God to be the watchman standing on the wall calling the world to repentance. We are calling the world to repentance. Change your ways. Let us just pray. <clears throat> Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for the word today. Hopefully that it will penetrate the hearts and the minds of all who hear it. And it will come and repent of his or her sins and make you our Lord and Savior. As your son Jesus Christ died on the cross for our sin. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen and amen. 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 Mm -hmm.